This video will demonstrate how to set up a SeaTrack USBL underwater GPS system using the pinpoint viewing software on an external laptop. This is everything you need to set up your USBL system. The bridge controller is connected to the ROV via the tether connection and the reel, and the system is already powered on. The laptop runs Windows and already has the pinpoint software installed. We have an X150 beacon and a GPS antenna. And finally, there is a 30 meter cable, which will connect the X150 beacon to the laptop and the controller. At one end of the cable, there is a power connector to draw power from the bridge controller and a USB plug to send data to pinpoint software on the laptop. At the other end of the cable, there is a wet connector, which attaches to the five pin port on the X150 beacon. Push the pins all the way into the plug to ensure a watertight seal. Slide the locking ring over the port and screw it on firmly. This will ensure that the beacon will not be lost. Plug the power connector into the controller just above the micro HDMI port. When powered, an LED on the X150 beacon will begin flashing a sequence that corresponds to its ID number. By default, this is set to 15. In order to connect these external devices to the pinpoint software, we will need to ensure the communication speed, or baud rate, is set correctly, and we will need to take note of the assigned COM port value. Open the Windows Device Manager by searching for Device Manager in the taskbar and clicking on the result. Open the subdirectory called Ports, COM and LTP. Plug the X150 USB into the computer. The Device Manager will refresh and we'll see a new connection called USB Serial Port. Take note of which label was assigned to the USB port. In this example, it is COM11. This number will be different for different computers and different ports. Plug the GPS antenna into your computer. It will be labeled Prolific USB to Serial COM port. Take note of the port it was assigned. In this example, it is COM19. Right click on the X150 beacon. In this example, COM11. Select Properties from the drop-down menu. Open the Port Settings tab and change the bits per second or baud rate to 11, 52, 0, 0. The rest of the default settings should be correct. Click OK to save this change. Right-click on the GPS antenna. In this example, COM19. Select Properties from the drop-down menu and as before, open the Port Settings tab. This time, make sure that bits per second is set to 4800. Click OK to save the change. Open the C-Track Pinpoint software. On the left-hand side, there is a quick bar with buttons for each screen and function. The top button starts connections with all attached devices. The folder is for opening log files. The map brings up a map view with your current position and track line. The beacon icon brings up real-time data from the X150 beacon. The satellite shows GPS satellite data. The waveform brings up a diagnostic window, which includes a ping response graph and background noise analysis. The command line icon, as expected, brings up a command line window for fine-tuning the software. Finally, the gear brings up the settings menu, where we will begin configuring the attachments and our preferences. Click the gear icon. The first tab allows you to configure units and the location that log files will be saved. The second tab is for configuring the beacons in the acoustic network. An X150 beacon will always be present. Double click to open the beacon setup. Ensure the ID number is set to 15 and the beacon type is X150. If operating in salt water, set the salinity value to 35 parts per thousand. If operating in fresh water, leave it at zero parts per thousand. 
For brackish water, it is recommended that you enter a custom value. Press the check mark to save these settings. Press the plus icon to add the ROV beacon. Set the ID value to 2 and ensure that the beacon type is set to X010. Press the check mark to save these settings. Move to the next tab by clicking the wrench icon. This is where we configure the equipment we have connected to the computer. Click on the plus icon to add a device. Select C track and then press the check mark. Select the port number you saw on the device manager, in this case, COM11. Ensure the baud rate is set to 115200 and click the check mark. Click the plus icon to add a second device. Select NMEA and click the check mark. Select the port number you saw in the device manager. In this example, it is COM19. Ensure the baud rate or bits per second is set to 4800. Click the check mark to save these settings. Move to the next tab by clicking the boat icon. This is where we configure how the beacon is physically set up. If you are operating from a fixed platform, select fixed position and then manually enter the latitude and longitude of the location you will deploy the beacon. This can be determined looking at Google Maps. If you are on a boat or do not have access to Google Maps on a cell phone, select dynamic position. You can enter an offset distance between the location of the beacon relative to the computer. The x-axis is north-south and the y-axis is east-west. There are options to set up an offset distance between the GPS antenna and the computer, but in most applications it's easiest to leave the default at zero and keep the antenna next to the computer. Move to the next tab by clicking on the map marker icon. This is where you can import predetermined tracks and waypoints. Press the plus icon to manually add a set of waypoints. Name the set, change the color, change the icon, and then manually add individual points with Latin long. Press the check mark to save the point. You'll see a list of all of the waypoints added. There's a space to add comments down below. The file icons in the bottom left-hand corner allow you to import GPS data sets or export a set that you've manually created. The next app with the map icon allows us to import a map overlay. Google Maps is the default. However, there are numerous options, including a way to import official nautical charts. The final tab is for sending coded messages between beacons and will not be used for our setup. The USB attachments will not connect to the pinpoint software until tracking mode is activated. Open the X150 information page by clicking the beacon icon. Engage tracking mode by clicking the top icon on the left-hand side of the screen. If the software fails to connect to either the X150 beacon or the GPS antenna, a pop-up will notify you. If this happens, go back to the device manager and the pinpoint settings menu and check that the attachments are configured correctly in both. As soon as tracking mode has begun, you will see data from the beacon reported on this page. Before you can deploy the beacon, you need to calibrate the magnetometer. Calibration is achieved by filling the buffer with data while moving the beacon through every possible orientation and then saving that buffer data. Click clear buffer in the top right corner of the screen. The buffer level will drop to zero. There are three phases to calibration. First, rotate the beacon 360 degrees around all three axes. Second, imagine you are painting the inside of a sphere with the end of the beacon 
by spiraling from the top of the sphere to the bottom of the sphere. Third, repaint the inside of the sphere, this time using vertical strokes. This will bring the buffer level up to 100%. Click Calibrate to save. If the calibration quality is less than 90%, clear the buffer and repeat this process. You are now ready to deploy the beacon. The beacon must be fixed a minimum of one meter below the surface, as far away from reflective surfaces as possible. It is best practice to extend the beacon from the end of a pole or a board if you are situated on a seawall or dock. The system is designed to operate in open water and will have difficulty in small spaces. Open the map view on the SeaTrack Pinpoint software. Deploy the ROV. You must descend below the X150 beacon in order for it to connect to the X010 modem on the ROV. You may proceed with your mission. Visit deeptrekker.com for more training and guides.